Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, here's an integral I uh, I got from the channel Maths 505. Um, I'm going to solve it uh, differently than he did. I'm going to be uh, employing Feynman integration, of course. Um, so let's just get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this that the hyperbolic tangent function is is equal to this it's just e to the x minus e to the negative x all over e to the x plus e to the negative x so we're just going to replace tangent hyperbolic with that and so there we go that's what we did and next we're just going to perform uh some simplification here um i distributed that e to the negative x in the numerator inside the parentheses there that's all i did there uh, next, we're going to bring x to natural log x, or if you prefer, you can say u is equal to natural log x, but I just prefer to write it this way. We're bringing x to natural log x. And if you do that, this is, uh, this is what happens. The bounds change from 0 to 1, and we have the, the following integral. All right. So, next, we start our Feynman integration process. We will create a function of t that closely resembles our original integral. In this case, I just replaced this 2 as the exponent on x with a t. And the motivation for that should be fairly obvious to you at this point if you watch my videos. That is so when we take the derivative, it will cancel this nasty natural log x in the denominator of our integrand there. All right. So, um, also what we want to note is that if we evaluate our function f of t at the point f at at t is equal to zero, the whole thing evaluates to zero because we end up with x to the zero, which is one, then minus one, which is zero. And if we evaluate it at t is equal to two, we have uh, the value of our original integral right there. All right. Next, we take the derivative with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign by just taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand there and leaving the rest alone. And this is what you end up with. Uh, next, we're going to use uh, this um, equation right here. This is the uh, Taylor series representation of 1 over x squared plus 1. And that is equal to this sum right here. That is good uh, for the absolute value of... Uh, of x less than 1, um, and we, we have that in our bounds. Of course, this is not technically less than 1, but we can get around that if we use the limit. I won't show that, but it's good on our integral, that, that sum right there. So we're just going to replace that 1 over x squared plus 1 with this sum. So this is what we, this is what we get when we do that. Um, and then, as you can see, the next step involves me just bringing this x to the t inside as a plus t on this exponent on x. Uh, and then I, I switch the uh, integral and summation notations there. And there's no problem since the sum and integral will both converge regardless. So we can, we can, switch, we can switch the order of those. And uh, if you work this out, uh, this is what you get. You just evaluate. Well, first you would bring out this negative one to the end, and then you would evaluate uh, this this integral right here, and this is what you end up with. So we have our f prime of t is equal to that. All right. Well, um, we were not interested in f prime of t. We wanted f of t. So what we do is we anti-differentiate this sum with respect to t term by term. That's, that's right here. This is basically f of t is equal to the sum of the antiderivative with respect to t term by term. Okay, and that evaluates to this. If we take the antiderivative term by term, we end up with negative 1 to the n times the natural log of 2n plus t plus 1, and then all of that plus c. Uh, I do not believe this sum as is uh, will converge. In fact, uh, hmm... I don't no, it, it it wouldn't it would not converge because this keeps getting bigger and bigger and we have an alternating series. So that would 
uh, that would diverge. But don't forget, we have this plus C. So once we actually figure out what that C is, it actually um, it actually makes a sum that does converge because the C will actually be a sum as well. All right, so now we're going to use this, if you remember from before, that if we evaluate our function at the point T is equal to zero, we get zero. So if we evaluate this thing at zero, which is right here, basically that T just drops out, we get zero. So zero is equal to this, which implies that C is equal to the negative of this. So we have C is equal to the negative of this sum right here. So that is going to help us because now um, we have f of t is equal to this sum minus this sum. And we can use the properties of logarithms uh, to bring these sums together uh, like this. So this is our f of t. This is, this is what f of t turns out to be. And this sum does converge. Okay, so um, if you remember, our, uh, our i is equal to f of 1. Um, and since this is our f of t, if we plug in 1, I'm sorry, i is not equal to f of 1, i is equal to f of 2. That's a mistake right there, so I'm going to fix that really quick. Uh, that is not f of 1. That is, in fact, f of 2. Yeah, because remember, uh, f of 2 is our original integral stated right here. f of 2 is equal to i. So, my mistake. Um, and that's this. That's this sum right here. So, uh, not not incredibly sad not not a very satisfying answer but um you know this is basically what we're saying right here that this integral is equal to this sum um and there i don't believe there's any sort of special function representation of this um there may be um i didn't really research it that well but um i, I think this is good enough so so this is, this is the answer, that uh, this integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x, tangent hyperbolic x over x is equal to this sum right here. Anyway, there you go, go guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.